Hi, this is Nick from Canaweld coming at you today from our office in Vaughan, Ontario. Uh, today's video is a viewer request video. We're going to show you guys how to change a spool of MIG wire. We're going to be switching from some 1.0 millimeter wire to some 0.8 millimeter wire, which is also going to require us to change the drive roll in here. So we're going to go ahead and show you how to completely take this out. We're going to switch rolls and then we're going to put a new spool in and we're going to run it out and get it ready to weld. And along the way, we're going to talk about some of the different types of drive rolls that you see here. We're going to zoom in so you can get a closer look at those as we proceed. So like I said, in here right now, we have some 1.0 mil and we want to take it out and we want to work with some 0.8. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is loosen up your cap here so that you can slide the spool off. Um, you might notice that it says tight with an arrow going this way, which is the opposite way that you usually spin things on. That is so that when this is going, we don't loosen this off and have your spool fall out while you're working. So let's go ahead and take this off. Okay, that's off. Now, the only tool we're gonna need is a pair of side cutters. You're gonna wanna hold your wire here and you're gonna wanna clip it on this side, not the other way around. You have to hold it here when you clip it so that this doesn't completely unspool because the wire is wound up under tension and if you try to fix it after it unspools, it's not gonna feed right and it's gonna be very frustrating. So let's go ahead and sever this, okay. We're going to slide the spool off and something that you're going to see on pretty much every single spool of MIG wire in the world is a couple of perforated holes here and here. Those are for you to tuck the wire into so that it stays nice and tight and you don't end up unwinding the whole thing because a spool of MIG wire is fairly expensive and losing it is not good. So now we got our zero, sorry, our 1.0 mil wire off. So now we're still left with the piece of wire that's all the way gone through our whip. So let's open up our drive roll system, take the tension off that. Let's go ahead and remove our tip. Uh, if you do have a ball on the end, you're gonna have to trim it off. I just trimmed this one so we don't have to worry about it. So we're gonna take that out. Now it's time to remove the old MIG wire. Some people will try to wind this back up and get it on there. I usually don't. I sacrifice the bit that's in there because like I said, I never seem to get it rolled back up nicely and then it doesn't feed right for me for the first little bit Then I don't have the time for that. So when you're doing this, keep it in nice tight loops because you don't, it's under tension and it's springy and the end is kind of sharp. And what you don't want is it whipping you in the face or whipping you in the eye or whipping one of your coworkers next to you. So let's just go just like this. We're almost out. There we go. So now we've got this ugly bundle that's still under tension and wants to spring out. So let's take the ends and wrap it up. Here we go. So now, more or less, this is ready to go into a garbage can. So let's take that, get it out of the way. So now we're ready to put on our next spool. Oh, actually, let's do our drive roll next. So to do the drive roll, we're gonna undo this little nut here. Just take it off, I'm gonna put it up here. So like I said, we're using hard wire, and that was 1.0 mil. So if you look at this drive roll, it's got a 0.8 millimeter on one side and a 1.0 millimeter on one side, and there's two grooves on the roll. The one that you want is the one that goes to the back. So the 1.0 roll is on this side, and we were just using that. That means that I put the 1.0 at the back, and that's the part we were using. This is the non-knurled type of roller. Uh, which is perfectly fine for using um, uh, stiff standard sort of wire. We also have 
and we're gonna do a close-up of this later. But we have an 045 and an 040 that I pulled off the shelf today with these grooves. Uh, you would use the roll system with the grooves if you you're using maybe like flux core wire or something kind of soft. It helps sink its teeth into the wire and not slip because it's a bit softer and it helps just push it out nice and smooth. If we were doing aluminum, we would grab our U-Groove roller, uh, which keeps the aluminum wire from deforming. It cradles it a little more nicely and it helps it feed nice and smooth. But today, like I said, we're doing solid wire, so we're gonna be able to stick with this roll, but now we want the 0.8 at the back. So again, you can see it's the smaller size and it fits on a little keyhole that's here. So let's half line that up and get it back in. So there we go. Now our roll is set to 0.8. Let's grab our cap. Twist this back in. You want it snug, but it doesn't have to be super duper tight. Okay, now we're ready to put our wire in. So you can see this one was all set up, tucked in nicely. We're gonna pull it out and get it ready to go. Uh, you can see that there's a kink here from where I had rolled it around here. We're just gonna cut that off because it's never gonna feed through this nice delicate system uh, if we don't. So, let's go ahead and trim that off. Now you might notice that on the roller here, you have a little nub and in your spool of MIG wire, you have a little hole. You wanna mate those two parts together so that it slips right over it and you get a nice good connection. So now that that's on, we're gonna feed our MIG wire from under and straight through. If we put this on the flip way, it's gonna come from the top and it's gonna to have to bend to go in and it's not gonna feed right. Always, always, always from the bottom. So let's go ahead and slip this into the guide spring. Put it across the bridge here. Make sure it's sitting in the roller and we're gonna slip it in. This little piece here is actually the beginning of the end of the torch. And so we're just gonna get it started so that it stays nice and tight. Cause like I said, we don't want this thing unspooling. Now we've got it a little ways in. Let's go ahead and close the system. Let's lock it down. Setting the tension on this is sort of a matter of feel. If you see that the wheels are spinning and your spool isn't moving, you need a bit more tension. If your wire is coming out funny though and it seems misshapen or you're getting shavings inside, you got too much tension. So we're gonna have to turn it on to find out, but in the meantime, let's tighten this up. There we go, we're all set there. We're gonna keep our tip and our nozzle off for now because I want that wire to have no problem coming through the end. And I'm gonna pull the trigger, it's gonna send it through the drive roll system, it's gonna come all the way through my torch and it's gonna pop out. So let's see how that goes. Uh, when you're doing this too, keep an eye on your, the whip for your MIG torch. You don't want it all coiled up or twisted up. You want it to feed nice and smooth. So here we go, we've begun the feeding process. Everything seems to be going pretty smooth, there's no slippage, so I think we have the right tension set. Keep going here. Should take just another minute. There we go. So we got a little bit too much out, but that's what we were looking for. So let's go ahead and put our tip back on. Now we'll thread our nozzle back on.
And then we're gonna grab our side cutters again and trim off the excess to the distance that we like. Boom. And there we go. Now we're ready to weld with some uh, 0 0.8 millimeter wire. And that's it, it's very simple. You just have to make sure that you mate the right rollers to the right kind of wire, and that's it. So thanks a lot for watching today, guys. If you like what you saw, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. We'd appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. We'd love to hear more feedback from you guys about that helps us guide our content. And if you're tech savvy, you can go ahead and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, or uh, Twitter. So thanks a lot for watching. Nick from Canna Weld, and I'll see you guys next time. Watching.